I'm also recording this anyway. So, okay, so the, the entire class, this Pi 125 class, is to use yeast as a model to study a mutation in human, to functional study a mutation in human, because in human we cannot do experiment to see the consequence of it. We only see it when people got sick and at the very end of it. We don't see the mechanism. So that's the whole purpose of this. So we, uh, well, we basically studied the MSH2 mutation which caused the HMPCC tumor in humans. Uh, now, uh, here's some molecular mechanism of the uh, MSH2, which is a mutated homologue. Uh, okay, so we use yeast as a model. Yeast is a very interesting model. Yeast is called budding yeast. In fact, uh, you sh should really remember this picture. Uh, the picture at the top side. Uh, see, the yeast is called budding yeast for a reason. And, and at, at the, at, on the picture on the top, you see at the bottom, this is something, this is something we call the mother cell. Mother cell, literally, mother cell. And this is a smaller one. Oh, gee, how, this is really annoying. Mm -hmm. uh, and I was recording. Uh, I'm going to log in so it won't remind me again. Uh, mm -hmm. Okay. Oh, gee. And my drawing again by that. Okay. okay. So this is the mother cell. That's the daughter cell. At the bottom, this is literally what we call mother cell. Uh, at the top, we call it daughter cell. Uh, so the the yeast is also called a budding yeast. So literally, the, the mother cell start with this and it, the, there will be a small bud grow up. And then grow bigger and bigger, and eventually it's going to split. And then the daughter cell become a new mother cell, give us another small bud, and the mother cell continue to grow. So that's what the yeast uh, grow. And so it's th there's the reason why it's called budding. Now, because of this, uh, the yeast cell uh, is a, is the one probably the best model system to study a cell cycle. In fact, s most of the cell cycle knowledge you learn from the textbook is established in Saccharomyces cerevisiae, G1S, G2N, uh, CDC, all those kind. Those are dis established in yeast first by Lee Lang Hartwell in the 1960s and 70s. So, in fact, uh, later on, maybe in two weeks, you are going to examine yeast under microscope and see how the how the uh, cell cycle difference uh, different uh, between the wild type and mutant uh, the cells. So, in two weeks. Okay. So, now the the. The interesting part of uh, yeast is it also has two different mating types. Yeast is a eukaryotic cell, it's diploid, it's undergo meiosis uh, mating, but there's no male and female in yeast. Uh, male and female in, in human or uh, mammalian is, is decided by X and Y chromosome. Uh, male and female in some other species is determined by Z and W. In some reptile, fish, it can be even decided by environment, the temperature, those things. But in yeast, there's no male or female. It's, it's called A and alpha. So yeast have two different mating types. One is called A type, the other one is called alpha type. That's the, the yeast, how the mating up. In, so the haploid, so the haploid yeast, one, is will be, one type will be called A, the other type called alpha. When these two haploid type best, they are going to uh, a fuse and then uh, become a diploid cell. So the this is one end called haplotype, haplotype, one end, one end. After they fuse, it becomes two end. So that's become the, th so this is basically the uh, uh, sexual reproduction process for the psychomatic cerevisi. It This is important because we want to use to study recombination. And it's actually a, a this this two mating type is probably one one of the very important uh, technique you 
use ease to generate a combinant. Okay, uh, so well, we know ease can be exists in haploid form and diploid form, basically one n or two n, one copy of chromosome, two copy of chromosome. And we can uh, we can knock out the yeast gene in a week and do a long arm PCR and replace it in yeast. So yeast can be easily used to generate a deletion. In fact, for every yeast gene, if it can be deleted, it has been deleted. We have about 5,000 or 4,500 single gene deletion for yeast. For every gene we can delete from yeast, we have already done that. So, and for every gene we can put a GFB, fluorescent protein, uh, as a tag, we have done that. For every gene we can put a his tag or his uh, antibiotic tag, we have done that. For every gene, I mean, the, 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 there, there are so many uh, overexpression tools in fact, mo many microarray, you see the human uh, technique uh, called microarray hybridization to study the whole genome expression. That was the first done in yeast. So the yeast is really, uh, yeast is also the first eukaryotic genome to be sequenced. It's sequenced in 1996, uh, almost 20 years ago now. So yeast is probably wow. one of the best studied organisms. All right, so now, uh, to introduce uh, a different gene to yeast, uh, we can, there are several different ways. One way is to use plasmid, that's transformation, what we are going to do today. There are other ways you can do a, a introduce the, the insertion directly into the genomic region, also by homologous recombination. Okay, so yeast, now there are some com uh, uh, conventions in yeast. This is also convention, a uh, genetic convention. So uh, <laughs> there will be dominant mutation, there will be a, a recessive mutation. And usually we, uh, we don't, in, in, in wild isolate, we don't call that mutation because it's hard to determine which one is wild type, which is the mutant, right? I mean, who is wild type here? So really, it's just a little different. So we instead of call mutation, we call allele. So the one allele is dominant, the other allele maybe is a recessive. For the dominant allele, we usually use a, a capitalized, uh, uppercase. Recessive allele, we often use a lowercase. The wild type one, now, and since if we really know what's the mutation, the wild type is always the, uh, using the uppercases. Uh, uppercase. We also use a plus to indicate that, and the mutant we often use a minus. If it's a, we if we know it's a deletion, sometimes we use a delta sign, delta, for a deletion. For example, if, if this is arginine two deletion, we just use delta. Here. And if it's the this is, uh, if you look at this symbol here, they are all haploid. If it's diploid, we put a, a slash and then say ARG plus. So this will be homozygous. Right. So if it's heterozygous, we can say ARG plus and a well, uh, mutant ARG minus. Or if I know it's deletion, I'm going to put deletion there. So as for the heterozygous. And sometimes we also use a P to indicate a protein, although this is some people don't use it anymore. but. Uh, at one time when I used this, a reviewer actually asked me to remove it, so I, I'm not sure what the convention now about this one. Yeah. Anyhow, but, uh, but if you still read the paper, sometimes you still see this ARGP indicated for protein. So, okay, uh, no, transformation is basically put exogenous DNA into a cell. Basically, you have transformation is a process where you, you have the cell, and the DNA outside we put into the cell, this process is called transformation. That's basically the definition of transformation. Okay, uh, but you, if you think of the cell, cell really don't want to like some things from outside. So if we put DNA into the cell, there has to be some kind of a, uh, force or to, to some kind of mechanism to force a cell accept this strange DNA 
right? Cell don't really need those strain DNA plasmid. So, so usually we have to do some kind of this is some kind of selection. We have to do use selection to force the the cell to accept the foreign DNA. So one way is something called a positive selection. The other way is connective selection. Well, in in our case, we our reporter strain AGY seventy five. The AGY seventy five cannot synthesize histidine. So AGY seventy five is a his three minus cell. The the it's a AGY seventy five is also haploid. And so it had a mutation in the HIS3 gene, it's minus. Our plasmid PMSH2, this plasmid actually had the HIS3 uh, marker gene. So, so if the if the AGY74 have accepted this plasmid, it's going to grow, it, it can synthesize histidine. So it can grow in the absence of histidine. This is very important. You need to remember. Uh, you need to understand this. This is something called positive selection. Basically, uh, for example, uh, I cannot drink whole milk because I'm lactose intolerant. So if a Spearman cafeteria, let's say our new president is going to say the Spearman cafeteria only offer whole milk for a month. Uh, by the end of the month, I probably will just die out on <laughs> campus so <laughs> because I cannot live on that whole milk. So, so basically, but if someone also offer me a, a gene therapy, say I'm going to transfer that uh, lactase persistent gene to me, I, I accept that gene modification gene therapy, then I can live on Spearman campus. With, with the whole, yeah, yeah that's, that's basically transformation. Yeah, 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 that's a positive selection. Yeah. yeah. So, that's probably a bad analogy, but it works. Also that makes sense. If it works, mm -hmm. <laughs> so, yeah. Okay, so, and then there's another case called negative selection. This is also important because we use negative selection to quantify, really quantify the function of the MSH2 mutant. So, every Every group had the a MSH2 mutant, but how do we know is that the mutant you have is that closer to the wild type MSH2, or is basically completely non-functional, like a uh, negative control, the vector control. So, so we when when we started, you have three plasmid. One is called PMSH2 wild type. The other one is called vector control. The vector control basically has no MSH2 at all, basically zero. 0% of the activity on of the mismatch repair uh, function, right? But the wild type MSH2, you can say that's 100%. So your mutant is probably somewhere between 0 and 100%, somewhere there. You need to find out. How do we find out? We use a negative selection called the, uh, using the, there's a, there's a reporter plasmid called PSH44. Uh, uh, I forgot the term. It's probably, for, yes. Uh -huh. The negative selection work, but how does the growth or the non-growth of histidine directly relate to the function of the DNA? No, this is not the, the P, uh, histidine is just a selection of the uh, PMHA2. The function is Euro3. Okay. The function of the uh, MH2 is going to measure by the Euro3. Okay. Uh, I'm going to explain later on, but uh, so hopefully, let me see, yeah. Oh, this is to uh, uh, explain the selection. This is a positive selection. So, for example, uh, if, uh, if uh, let me see, uh, the, the right, so if the cell cannot make uh, leucine, but we can, if we put a leucine, uh, this must be the plasmid. If the plasmid Oh no no! This is the protein. Sorry, that's the gene. Uh, if the gene is mutated, the cell cannot grow. Uh, okay, now if after the gene is mutated, we we'll put a plasmid. The plasmid has a gene can synthesize this, and then the cell going to force to accept this plasmid. This is the example of positive selection. 
So this is an example of positive selection. Right. So it's, it's like in my case, I do not have a, a gene can uh, digest whole, full, uh, whole milk, but if someone, if I accept a gene therapy, and then I can digest, if someone pro provide a plasmid uh, to my cell, okay. I accept that and that's the only way I can live, so, okay. So, okay, and for if the, the plasmid doesn't have that gene, it's an empty vector that will be a negative control because it's, uh, there's no, nothing will grow there. Yes? You can just get the unicorn. Oh, that's fine. The, the this is live recording. The, the oh, interaction okay. is... Uh, okay, yeah. so I remember from one of the other video lectures mm -hmm. it was talking about a flow chart Okay. And how if there um, is or is not the MSH2 function, the protein function, then the frame shift won't occur, which will eventually cause the FOA assay to become toxic. That's so, right. So, um, yeah. how is it that we're talking about if it will grow or not, and why why aren't we talking about if it will be like if it will kind of be killed? You know? I don't yeah, know. I'm trying to find out uh, that slide. Okay. Uh, there, the slides are here. Sorry, I'm jumping. Uh, so, you this whole map is uh, uh, this is basically the PMS 244 reporter gene. Here. So it has a Euro 3 gene here, but in front of Euro 3 is a microsatellite. There is a GT repeat, but the GT repeat is 16.5 times. So you have. GT repeat two nucleotide is repeated 16.5 times, which means 33 nucleotides, mm -hmm. 33 base pair. 33 base pair, remember, three base pair code for one amino acid. Right. So 33 base pair means 11 amino acid. So this, this GT, uh, this GT repeat is in frame, this is something called in frame fusion with the Euro 3 gene. So the MSH2 gene basically going to fix the mutation in the microsatellite repeat. It's it's very important f function of MSH2 re to repair the, the mistake caused by microsatellite uh, uh, slippage during the DNA replication. That's also one major source of a DNA mutation. Uh, but if there is an insertion or deletion in this region, let's say the, this this GT repeat during replication, there's a mistake it from from 32 it becomes uh, from 33 it becomes 32. That means there is one base pair deletion. Now after that one base pair deletion, there will be what kind of mutation? It's a misframe. That, that that one base pair deletion is will lead to a misframe. That's like just the same thing as a friendship. Right? Uh, oh yeah, oh friendship. Uh, oh. Sorry, that's the proper term. Okay, sorry. Friendship mutation. Friendship mutation. Basically, the, then the entire Euro three will not be translated properly. Since that is the case, now. Uh, in our case, we actually put the. Uh, sorry, I'm really jumping back and forth here, but uh, maybe I should re reorganize the slide next time so I don't have to jump uh, with uh, Euro 3. Okay, in our case, we actually put a uh, uh, FOA in the media. So it turns out uh, the plate with FOA. Uh, FOA actually will kill the wild type Euro 3, but the mutant Euro 3, if it's a Euro 3, Euro 3 minus, it actually cannot, cannot kill the cell. So the FOA is a compound only kill the wild type Euro 3, but not the mutant Euro 3. So, so basically if MSH2 cannot repair the mistake in the GT repeat. I go back to that slide again. Uh, oh. right. So basically, if 
if the euro 3 is deleted um, a friendship mutation the cell going to live on FOA plate live on FOA plate if it's wild type you will say wild type it will be dead on FOA plate okay. So if you're, we can basically measure whether it lived or died by if there's growth or no growth. Uh, like correct. Basically, way. colony. You can count the number of colony on a plate. Okay, but the dead, the dead yeast will go away. Like the dead are dead. wild type. Right. Euro three. Be what the, what does this mean? The every uh, colony you see on the FOA plate that means a mutation caused by the GT repeat. So the number of colony is basically the number of mutants. If we know the total number of cells, and then you are going to know how many mutants, mm -hmm. you, you know the number of a mu uh, uh, a mutant, mutant, and you also know the total number of cells, and then that's basically the mutation frequency. So then we can know the wild type, and the vector control and your mutant, you can put your mutant say this one is close to the wild type, that one is close to the mutant, uh, uh, empty vector. So you can quantify the mutation. Yes. So specifically today, and what we're going to today, are we working with the FOA or not? No, we are not using okay. FOA. We are, uh, just we are just trying to put uh, the plasmid into the cell first. Okay. Today, we are, we, are, we are using a media called SD minus histidine and minus what? Tryptophan. Tryptophan. Yeah, because we want to keep both plasmids, SH44 and uh, PMSH2 plasmids. And we're doing, we're also, it's, it's without URA still, right? Yeah, without URA, because we, want to, we also want to select a wild type URA3. Mm -hmm. Right. So, okay. Yes. Selection of the plasmid. Selection of the PMSH2 plasmid. So histidine has a. Oh, it's the, the determining factor for that? No, no, histidine is an amino acid. It's like necessary. It's like a. Histidine is one of the 20 amino acids to synthesize a protein. So you have to have it in the. Yeah. In, you know, like it's necessary for the growth of, of the. Of yeah. The Every protein you synthesize, you're going to have histidine well, in there. it's more of a question of what is the absence of it signifying? Does it mean that it doesn't have it? So oh, absence? Right? You don't, you don't, we don't, we don't give histidine to the cell. If like uh, in the media we provide to the cell, it contains 20 amino acids. But for the plate, we, we provide to the cell the media, yeah. Sorry. Sorry, no, I'm yeah. sorry. If you have like the yeast and it, you grow it in the absence of histidine, it shouldn't live. If you have a yeast that's transformed with this plasma that contains a histidine selection marker, yeah. then it should grow because it'll be able to grow in the absence of histidine. I, I understand. Okay, I'm it's sorry. It's more like what's the point? Like what is the actual purpose? I feel like histidine, histidine is a, it's, it's a, it's a, it's an amino acid in the sequence of in the genome. Yeah, of the in the genome of the yeast. So like you have to have it around. Is that look, look, look at this. Look at the purpose of his thing is here. His three gene is on the plasmid. The cell itself is histidine oh. minus. The cell cannot synthesize histidine. Basically, the cell going to die without histidine. That's what the plasma is for. Right, yeah, 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 yeah. Got yeah. it. It's actually, uh, if, if Spearman cafeteria put 20 amino acid in salad, mm -hmm. there'll be 20 <laughs> trees there, but mm -hmm. someone took that histidine tree out, the person without PMSA2 plasma is going to die. Okay, so, so the actual cell is not told the histidine, but needs actual histidine to grow on the atom. Yeah. So Right, right, yeah. That's right. yeah. Because so histidine is absolutely necessary for the yeast to grow. Like you, yeah. you can't. Not just can't for the yeast, for, uh, for mm -hmm. everyone. Everything, but yeah, you know, yeah, if yeah. it doesn't yeah. have it, it needs yeah. it in order yeah. to be. And my other question would be um, for just for this specifically, mm -hmm. I think I'm not understanding.
understanding why the plate that we're playing on today mm -hmm. is without these things. So it's, it's without his sitting, without trip, trip to, uh -huh. without, without your Your stuff. three. Why are those not? Without his sitting, because we want to select for PMSH2 plasmid. Without tryptophan, because the cell is also tryptophan. The cell itself also cannot synthesize tryptophan, but only the reporter plasmid has the tryptophan gene there can synthesize tryptophan. You're asking the same question that I just asked. <laughs> yeah, I am. Okay. Yeah. There are two plasmids here. Yeah, so when you yeah. have the cell, the yeast cell, and you're putting in the plasmid, because we're also, we also are trying, there's also like the salmon plasmid that's also in there, yeah. and the possibility that both of them are getting put into that yeast cell are yeah. pretty high. So you have to select for the ones that have PMSH2, and we and can identify that by the histidine. So and the trip. And PSH44, and we can identify by the tryptophan and the uh huh. Yes. No, uh, yeah, uh, the uracil actually is an uh, additional selection because we, we need the uro3 gene to for functional assay later on. But why do we want the, wouldn't we want the, oh because then the whatever yeast does not, does not grow. grow, we don't want. You don't need. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We need to select for the functional uro3 gene. Yeah. Yes, so, yeah, yeah. Okay. So. Yeah, the, those are very important the questions. So what so. will we see then? Yeah. If we, if we're, it's not just gonna be like, I don't know. It when, when after we played this in twenty in two to three days, mm -hmm. should it be kind of the same pattern of growth that we see when we're trying to transform the yeast, or like how will we know which which what we want after this? You know, if like they are self grow on those plates, that's what we want. Any cell because any cell, that grows there. any cell grow there, that means they have the both plasmid SH44 and uh, PMSH2. Because they, I, yeah. okay. Because so you basically that, select that anything question. grow there. So this is, because this that, is what, yeah. Because yeah, they positive. can't survive on there. Anything with the without the plasmid will not live on the plate. Right, yeah. with the plasmids, they can, those are the only ones that can survive on that. Yeah, plate. we pick those. Okay. This is, this is what the positive selection means anything live is what we want this is the positive selection yeah. negative selection means anything we want will die we cannot see it so we have to somehow select something we cannot see so that will be uh, Thank yeah. you. okay, okay uh, yeah how do we know both plasmid are in the east yeah we have to use a proper media so okay Okay, uh, how do we do the functional assay later on? I'm, th I'm going to skip that for now. So, okay, I think we, we are really ready for the. Okay.